Mega Man 2 could have been even worse. It just dropped and the reviews aren't looking good. So a lot of people hate the story and think the animation looks bad, but this interview with the director explains why it looks like that. The movie was made not only on a TV budget, but also using a TV pipeline. Let me explain. In movies, you have a lot of time and money to work on the characters and the story. But in TV shows, they're made really fast. And this was a challenge because the director wanted to make everything look as cinematic and epic as possible. He said, There are things that we just can't do in the way that they would do them in a theatrical feature. For example, in a feature, you can custom light every single shot to make it look gorgeous. With TV, it's a little more limited. You set the lights once within a sequence, and for the most part, it stays that way, whether you want it to or not. The trick was picking our battles. They had to really stretch their budget and be very careful how they spent the money. And we tried to control and regulate the filming in a way you don't notice the limited shots. When it came to things like lifting the city up into the sky, we decided to show one shot of it taking off, some shots in the sky, and then two shots of it coming down. I mean, in a way, it's kind of how they used to make movies in the past. Effects have always been expensive, so you try to do it in as few spectacular shots as you can. There are tons of differences between making an animated movie and a TV show. Luckily, the director understood these challenges. If it wasn't for his understanding of those differences, Megamind 2 could have been even worse. Megamind 2's budget was so low, they couldn't afford Will Ferrell. They also couldn't afford the original movie animators. DreamWorks replaced the entire cast with voiceover doubles, and even replaced the animators too. Since the trailer dropped, fans have been hating on the visuals of Megamind 2. The movie looks like this because they ended up outsourcing most of the animation production to studios in India and Canada, and the results have definitely disappointed fans. A studio called Doverman Pictures in Canada worked on everything from the designs to the animation. Which, quick side note, I went to Google Doverman Pictures and got exactly what I searched for. <laughs> I had to add animation to the search to actually find the studio's website. Anyway, a studio called 88 Pictures in India did the actual animation. By the way, if you want to improve your art or need help starting your animation career, check out the links in the description. Megamind 2 looks just like the original. Since the movie takes place days after the original film, the animation team wanted to make the new movie and show look just as good, but they didn't have the same budget. You might notice a lot of things look different, but Megamind himself looks exactly the same. In an interview with the director, he explains how they got the character of Megamind to look the same as he did before. The original Megamind character model that was used in the feature, we used in the series as well. The same goes for Roxanne, the mayor, and any other repeated characters. We modified a few things, retexturing, re-rigging, but the basic models are all the same. The animation supervisor went on to explain more. Beyond that, there's texturing and lighting. We got really close to the original, though I think Megamind is a bit more blue. The colors we can include today are so much richer than they used to be. After knowing all this, you can say that technically, Megamind 2 looks just like the original. So Megamind 2 is a sequel to an old franchise. It's cheap. Its production was outsourced. It's basically everything wrong with the animation industry right now. This turn a TV show into a movie trend is just getting started because Disney's going to do it too. And you can learn more about that in this video here.